All right, guys. Well, um, first of all, thanks for coming. Thanks, Abe, for uh, letting us have this here uh, uh, this morning. Um, so I guess to start out with, um, I'll, go, I'll go over a little bit about who I am, um, what I've been up to, and, and sort of what I bring to the table in, this, uh, in these talks. Um, so my name is David Fredrickson, and I'm with a company called Swift Web Development or web design and marketing. Uh, we're located in downtown Lynchburg, uh, 1225 Main Street. Um, for the past uh, five or so years, um, I've been involved in uh, marketing, um, specifically for a sort of mid-size uh, international manufacturer, um, you know, doing everything from um, you know, magazine ad placements to social media to website creation. Um, and uh, uh, through some of that and, and through some of my own research, I hope to be able to you know, share some information with, uh, with people that Will help them in their, uh, you know, in their uh, quest for, you know, getting attention, getting that uh, that attention into a conversion, into a sale, and uh, and making, you know, basically social media work. You know, we're not talking about top level, uh, you know, marketing jargon. We're we're really talking about how are we selling things to people. Um, so with that said, take a sip of coffee and let's begin. So. The main focus of this talk is going to be what we call the noise attention ratio. Um, we like to call it the NAR because it's fun to say. Um, so what is that ratio and, and why is it important? Um, no matter what platform we're talking about here, um, advertising is kind of a dirty word, marketing, uh, whatever uh, platform we're, we're speaking of, whether that is a billboard, um, a business card, a website, uh, social media on whatever platform we're, we're speaking of, um, there is a ratio of um, a finite amount of attention that you're able to get. There are only X amount of people that are going to see that billboard. There are only X amount of people that are going to visit your website. Um, but there is the environment around it, and that's the noise. So let's take, uh, for instance, um, a billboard. Right. So you've got, you've got that billboard, and um, there are a finite number of cars driving past that billboard, but where's the noise? What were we talking about noise? This is the noise. Does anyone look out the window when they ride in a car anymore as a passenger? No, definitely not. No one's paying attention to that billboard. Let's be real. Um, so the uh, noise attention ratio has changed drastically. I mean, incredibly uh, has shifted in the past, I don't know, 10 years, right? And we're talking everything from billboards to radio to television. Um, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, this is the TV. This is the new TV. TV is radio now, you know? I mean, that's real here. Um, you know, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Pinterest, that's ABC, NBC, CBS. Um, and we need to start thinking that way. Um, and so the, the, uh, this paradigm shift uh, has been happening so, so steeply. Um, banner ads, for instance. Now, let's, let's not just, just you know, poo-poo all over you know, traditional uh, marketing here. Banner ads, that's digital. When's the last time you clicked on a banner ad? I mean, it's ridiculous. Why do they exist anymore? Um, we've got a, a blind spot on the internet now over here and sometimes up here. We don't even look there anymore. It just doesn't, it's not valuable. It's not providing value to us, so we don't care. Um, and so those kind of, those tactics waste our time. Um, and we understand that people's most valuable resource is their time. Um, look at a company like, like Uber, for instance. Uber doesn't sell transportation, they sell time. That's why they're doing so well. So time is the resource and we need to respect that. You know, it, it, as far as the dealing with our audience, we need to respect their time. You know, don't bother me, man. Like we're, we're like Teflon, you know, the stuff just rolls off of us. You see ads constantly everywhere. Um, you know, when, when's the last time you watched a commercial on television and paid attention to it? So, I mean, we fast forward through all the commercials, so Netflix, Hulu, you know, all this stuff. And when we do have to see a commercial, when it actually comes on and it makes us watch it before the content we actually want to see, what do we do? Let me check my email, what's going on on Facebook. You know, we don't care. Let's be real. Um, and so this, this paradigm shift has been happening, and we're kind of going through the youthification of our society. Uh, five years ago, ten years ago, who in this room thought that they would be Facebook users, would be serious Facebook users? I didn't. I didn't want to be on Facebook. I still wouldn't be on Facebook if it wasn't for business. Um, and so we've got uh, a huge paradigm shift where we're talking about um, sort of people, people my age and older, 30, you know, 30 and older, um, doing things that young people used to do. So think about the selfie. 
the largest demographic of selfies are middle-aged women. I mean, it is. You know, kids don't take selfies anymore. It's lame. You know, um, my 13-year-old nephew, he's not a Facebook user. He will never be a Facebook user. He is on Instagram. He's on Snapchat. That's, that's his platform. You know, his, his dad, his uncle is on, is on Facebook, you know. Um, none of his friends are there. So we need to be living and we need, or we need to be marketing in the year we, we live in. You know, this isn't, this isn't 2001, this is 2016, and we've got to find that white space that is not occupied. Um, and a lot of times that is the social, that is um, some of these emerging platforms. Um, I think a very powerful tool that is very simple to use is Facebook. And Facebook has changed a lot in the past five years. Um, and yes, I understand Facebook is aging. It definitely is. It's on a downward slope with young people. Um, but are we selling to 15-year-old kids? Maybe we are, maybe we're not. Something to consider. Um, but 90% of adults in this country are active users on Facebook. It's got the biggest data set known to man. All right, so if you're in real estate, um, you can market to who Facebook thinks are prospective real estate buyers. Well, how do they know that? So if you've been on Realtor.com, uh, Zillow, and Trulia, there's a cookie in your browser. Facebook's like, okay, cool, you've been to XYZ website, so you're a prospective home buyer. We're going to serve you ads. Um, Facebook allows you to not only target very, very uh, specifically, but it allows you to segment your, target, your targeting. So let's say you're, you're marketing a skincare product. Um, you want to market this skincare product to Asian Americans. Use an ad graphic and copy that would appeal to Asian Americans. If you're marketing to moms, use an ad copy and a graphic that, that appeals to moms and don't serve them to each other. It doesn't make sense. You're serving content to people that don't care. Facebook allows you not to uh, overserve your content and not to um, put your advertising dollars where they are not, uh, uh, not uh, giving you that ROI, that return on investment that you're looking for. And Facebook has not quite reached critical mass yet, I don't think. I mean, it, it's, it's hard to tell where it's going. Um, I think it's still on the upward slope with, with older people, um, but with younger people, of course, it is, it's plummeting. Um, so, you know, we're in, Facebook's great, or let's say we're talking about Instagram, Pinterest, it doesn't really matter. Um, so yeah, we're in, we want to do the social thing, right? So what do we do? How do we make that work? Excuse me one second. I'm definitely not used to speaking in front of people. Um, so how do we use that, you know? Um, I think uh, the best way to, to leverage social media is to give things to people. Give, 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 give to people. Um, you know, people on, on social are still advertising and marketing like it's television. Bye, bye, come see us. You know, that, no one wants that. Facebook is a very personal space. You're on there to look at your grandkids' pictures. You're on there to, to catch up with old friends. You're not there to buy things. You're not there to be marketed to. And that pisses us off. Let's be real, you know. It, we don't want to see that stuff. So give first and use that leverage to ask for the sale. Um, so in that, uh, in that vein, we're talking about content. Um, you know, th this, this top level, you know, marketing jargon is completely useless. It doesn't matter how many impressions you got. It doesn't know, it doesn't matter how many likes you got. It doesn't ha matter how many comments you got. How many sales did you make? Where's that conversion and how did it happen? Um, and so the beauty of Facebook is that it puts the ads natively in your stream. So does Instagram. Um, it's not a banner ad on the side where, I mean, you could, of course you do get uh, a sidebar ads with Facebook, but it's natively in the stream. So you're scrolling through your daily life. It's up there. You see it. If you don't like it, you just keep on going. It doesn't bother you. It doesn't disrupt you. It doesn't, it doesn't disrespect the time that's so valuable that you are giving to Facebook. And that's why Facebook has done it that way. They really reward high quality, engaging, valuable content. Um, and so, you know, television, radio, print, that's all vanilla. It's just, let me throw that out there, see what happens, see who sees it. And if I'm lucky, someone may, you know, may convert. But how do we even know where they came from? You know, with, with analytics, with these metrics uh, on these social platforms, you can literally track your conversion from the time that someone hits your ad to the time that they hit add to cart on your website. And if they didn't hit add to cart, you can, you can uh, uh, you know, banner retarget them and say, hey, did you forget to add to cart? I mean, it's incredible. Um, 
And so I think that the, the biggest part about Facebook or about any any social platform really is execution. It doesn't matter how good your product is, it doesn't matter how good your idea is, it matters if you're executing that properly in an effective way that makes people want your products, makes people want to know more. Um, and the way we do that is really through through engaging content. You know, content is king. Usable, valuable, engaging content. Um, gives people a reason to check you out. I think I'm scrolling by accident here. I'm sorry, guys. All right. Um, Okay, so um, we're kind of in a strategy here. Uh, we're talking about a strategy that is um, providing something to people. Um, let's say you are that skincare uh, company we were talking about earlier. Um, maybe you can provide some content that is 10 life hacks to make your skin better. This is just off the top of my head. You're not selling anyone anything. So we create this, this, uh, uh, this conduit, this sales funnel, to the conversion process through usable, valuable content. Um, whether that's on a blog, um, whether that is a YouTube you know, thing, regardless, um, we're creating that, that sales funnel. And now we didn't invent this. Um, you know, top level companies use, use content, use this funnel, um, and when done properly, it converts to sales. And it's trackable. And you can use it at scale. I mean, it's insane. Big companies are doing this and scaling it out huge. Um, so we really want to, like I said, respect that time. I mean, what, do you remember the last time uh, you were on, on the web and your website loaded like, what, a fraction of a second slower than it usually does? You wanted to throw your computer out the window. You know, seriously, our time is so incredibly valuable. So any questions at this point before we, before we move a little bit farther? We're talking, kind of talking about some theory and, and less practice. All right, um, so let's be practitioners. Um, we're talking about theory here and, and um, you know, about kind of some, some more big picture things. Um, so a practitioner, a good practitioner, is going to do a handful of things. One, is going to run multiple campaigns at once for the same conversion. So let's say I am marketing that skincare product. I'm gonna put out at least three campaigns with one variable different in each of them. So if I'm running a Facebook ad campaign, I'm gonna have w one headline, same, same graphic, different headline, same graphic, uh, then same headline, different graphic. And start seeing what happens. Put it out there to people. You're gonna, you're gonna see your analytics go up and down. The ones that aren't performing well, cut them. The ones that are performing well, figure out why. And then analyze those results, modify your plan, and implement it again. Um, you know, stay light on your feet and, and keep, uh, uh, keep this, this strategy evolving um, because that's really key. Um, and besides uh, just respecting that time, I mean, I can't, I can't, I can't value that enough. Um, it's, uh, it's really crucial. In Facebook, you're able to look at Oh my gosh, it's incredibly powerful what you can do with, with Facebook. And, and the, now, Facebook doesn't spoon feed it to you. You've got to know what you're looking at. Um, but let's say you have, you, let's say you have the same ad served to three different demographics. That's incredible market research. Who's responding? Who cares about your ad? Then when you find out who does care and who doesn't care, and you need to market to those people that don't care, well, what do you do to make those people care? You start changing your approach, and then once those people start caring, you have an idea of what you're doing. Um, you know, just doing this vanilla approach of TV and radio on social, it's not the same ball game. You know, you can't just throw something out there to everyone and assume that it's going to work. Um, segmentation. Uh, you know, if I'm marketing to, to you, you want to see something different than if I'm marketing to you. You know, and, and we, need to, we need to understand that. Um, and it's very simple, you know, so to run these segmented uh, ad campaigns. Um, Let's talk about platforms a little bit. I'm, I'm not going to touch on every single one. Of course, we talked about Facebook. That's probably the biggest one that people care about in this room. 
Um, although uh, I've heard it over and over again, and, and probably for years at this point, that Instagram is the new Facebook. And it certainly is. Now, it's, it's, um, it's a lot different. The point of Instagram is very different. The interface of Instagram is very different. Um, and the demographic uh, you know, that is the user base of, of Instagram uh, is, is very different than Facebook. Um, but Instagram is a very reciprocal uh, um, environment. So say you are, um, oh, I've got a client that sells um, very high quality preservation materials for sterling silver heirlooms. She crushes it on Instagram. And it's mostly older people that buy her products, but she crushes it on Instagram because she follows or likes and, and interacts with everyone on a hashtag that is relevant to her business, Antique Silver. You better believe she's liked every single one of those pictures. And what have they done? They followed her, they've liked her, and they buy from her. Um, you know, create a, a conduit through Instagram that allows click through to your website, actually to her Etsy store in, in this case. Um, and she's selling products through Instagram directly. They never touch her website. She has a website. They never touch it. Straight through Instagram. Pinterest is another big one. If you're trying to sell something, a product, a physical, tangible item, Pinterest is huge. Pinterest is not a social network, guys. It is a search engine. People look for information on Pinterest. And it could be how to build this cool thing with a palette, right? We've all looked at cool DIY stuff on Pinterest. But it's also looking for product information. And people do buy directly from Pinterest. I'll take that, that silver preservation company. Um, we're tracking her, her conversion from different, uh, uh, different platforms. Pinterest is huge for her. Directly, right from Pinterest, right to the store, right to add to cart and bought. Because people are in more of a buying mindset on Instagram and on Pinterest. On Facebook, forget about it. People are in a personal mindset on Facebook. They're not making purchasing decisions. You know, they might just be killing some time. You know, um, Snapchat is emerging with, with especially the younger demographic. Um, if you are selling to people under the age of 30, you better start learning about Snapchat. Seriously, um, I don't think. Uh, um, I don't think we'll be having this. I don't think anyone will be having this conversation uh, in the next five years without mentioning Snapchat. Um, YouTube, our final uh, platform. I wanted to touch on YouTube again. Not social search engine. YouTube is the second largest search engine uh, after Google. YouTube has almost the same number of search queries as Google. If you're not in that space. You're out of your mind. You have to be. I mean, why do you think we're videotaping this right now? And I'm going to put my silly face on YouTube. You know, um, it's it's so crucial. Um, now, is it possible to be everywhere all the time? Yes. Can you? Is it feasible? No. Not all the time. Um, so. Our recommendation is that if you can't execute to 150%, not 100, not 110%, if you can't execute to 150%, find the person that can for you or cut that platform out. If you don't have the time to put together a high quality YouTube video or even an authentic YouTube video, don't get on the platform. Um, if you want to focus on one platform, focus on that one platform 150% until you're converting. Once you're converting and you've got the idea, then maybe dabble in the next one. Um, you know, spreading yourself thin is not going to get you sales. It's just not. Um, and I guess uh, uh, we haven't touched on the more traditional routes. Um, we do believe those are effective. Um, whether we're talking print ad placement, well, print ad placement is, is has been taking a steep decline. Um, if you look at a lot of uh, uh, large companies like L'Oreal, for instance, uh, you know, cosmetics company, cosmetics are an incredibly competitive space. I mean, billions of dollars, and everyone is fighting tooth and nail for it. Um, they spend, I think it was $600 million a year on print ad placement. Some of that money could be allocated better towards social. Absolutely. And that's the direction that they're moving. They're, they're very slow in this process. A lot of people have beat them to that punch, but you better believe they are scrambling to get there. Um, so, like I said before, I guess kind of summarizing and going back. Um, I can't stress this enough. Time, time, time. We value our time so, so much. Um, and that's exactly why I'm here giving free information. I value your time enough to say, hey, listen, let's talk. Let's do something real and valuable here. You know, this, I'm not sale, you know, this isn't a sales pitch. This is, this is useful, relevant, engaging content. And that is uh, what you should be giving to your audience. <coughs> useful, engaging. It could just be, it could just be heartwarming. It could be funny. But something that's useful. 
So what we do is we give, and then we give, and then we give, and then we give. Then we ask for that sale. Or let's say we're creating a click-through scenario with a Facebook ad uh, to our 10 life hacks for a nice skin. Well, you better believe on that blog post, you need to have a second free proposition. You know, put your email address in here for this free thing. Then we've got email addresses. We can start email marketing. Um, also, uh, have, a, have a link right to the product on that blog post, but not selling it, not saying, saying the point of this blog post is to get you to buy this product. It's to give you, you know, good content. But by the way, we're this company, you know, and, and we sell this thing. Um, so I think I talked a bit fast. How long do we have, Evan? That's not bad. I know you guys have to get to work. We all have to get to work. You're not making any money sitting in this room right now, and that's a problem. That's what we're talking about. Conversion. Who cares about impressions and all this, you know, this uh, top level marketing, you know, mumbo jumbo. If, if your marketing agency or your marketing company is telling you that you're succeeding by get because you're getting impressions, likes, and comments, they're full of it. What did you sell? Yeah. So with that said, right though. Um, so again, thanks guys for coming out and listening to me. Um, and I hope uh, this it's provided some sort of value to you because that was uh, that's the point of uh, these talks. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you.